All right. Uh, next, I will show how to examine the uh, confounding uh, through the uh, SPB example. The scientific question here is uh, whether relationship between age and SPB is confounded by gender. So remember, this is different from uh, one we um, assess if gender is an interaction terms with the age or gender is an effect modifier for the relationship between age and SPB. So here, uh, what we really want to say is whether the relationship between age and SPB will change significantly when gender is adjusted for. So in another word, uh, we try to look at um, with and without adjustment for the gender, if the relationship between age and SPB will have a big change. So here's the uh, SAS code. Um, uh, by the way, uh, I will show uh, how to use SAS uh, to get the output at the end of the lecture. So here I will only show you the code and give you the SAS output. At the end, uh, I will use uh, SAS, I will use the software to show you how to get the result. Um, so one comment on the SAS code is we can use a uh, SAS procedure called uh, PROC GLM. GLM means uh, General Linear Model. So this is another procedure for the linear uh, regression model in SAS that we can use for regression analysis. And it is uh, similar to the uh, procedure PROC REG, um, but the PROC GLM can also be used to do analysis of variance. Um, and we'll talk more about the uh, analysis of variance uh, in uh, lecture number nine. Um, so in order to see if uh, gender is a uh, confounder for the relationship between age and SPB, we'll run two models. The first model will run um, a GLM uh, with age as the only predictor variable for the outcome SPB. So this will look at an adjusted effect of age on SPB or the crude effect. Um, the other model will uh, include both age and the sex as the predictor. Um, and here we also can have a estimate of the effect of, of age on SPB. This will call adjusted effect or an adjusted estimate uh, for the parameter beta one. Okay, so basically the procedure is pretty simple. The SAS syntax, we just use SAS proc GLM, and then we need to uh, identify data resource. And then the main part is this model statement. Um, this will specify the mean model. Uh, so we'll use the first model, we use SPB, uh, systolic blood pressure as the outcome, which is on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And then on the right-hand side of the equal sign or the predictor variables. And here is just a simple linear regression. We use age as the only predictor or exposure. Um, and then slash solution. The solution will ask for a solution table. The solution table uh, is just the parameter estimate table. So this is a little bit different from a PROC REG, the regression procedure. So for the regression procedure, we do not have to specify the solution and then the SAS output will include the parameter estimate. But in the PROC GLM, you have to say solution or you can just use a shortcut, uh, just one letter S, um, and this is also shows solution. So without um, indicating the solution table, uh, the PROC GLM will not output the uh, parameter estimate. And uh, you can still remember the asset three, so this will report type three sum of squares. And also the CL part uh, will ask SAS to output the the confidence limit or the uh, uh, confidence interval. Uh, by default, this will be a 95% confidence interval. 
All right. And uh, similar for the second model, uh, we have the model statement and we should use age and sex as the uh, uh, predictor variables. And also we have the same specification. The only one thing different from this one with the, the first one is because we include the sex as a dummy variable. Uh, so that's to say um, a variable with two levels, one reference level uh, and the other level higher than the reference level or different from the reference level. Um, and um, in order to specify this uh, gender or sex as a dummy variable, so we need to use this class uh, statement. So the class statement um, will specify the variable as a uh, categorical variable. So here, sex will be a dummy variable. Uh, and we set the reference group as a zero. Um, so remember zero is female, you know, one is male, and therefore we'll use female as the reference group or the baseline group, uh, quote unquote baseline group. Um, and without specifying the reference group, SAS by default will use the largest number as the reference group. So remember here we code the gender as zero and one. So without specifying the reference group as a zero or female, SAS by default will use one or male as the reference group. But if we specify the reference group using this syntax, um, and SAS will treat zero or female as the reference group. Please keep in mind, this is very important uh, when we uh, specify a categorical uh, variable. Okay, so here's the SAS output. Um, and this is the, uh, uh, we just cut part of that. Uh, it's part of the solution table we call the parameter estimate. And this is actually from uh, the solution table of two different models, but since we're not interested in uh, the data zero and the uh, other estimate, only interested in the estimate uh, of age on SPD. So we just copy and paste the age parameter estimate. And then you can see in model one, remember model one, this is the N adjusted or crude estimate. The crude estimate got a 0.98. So this is to say with one unit increase in age, one unit is one year. So it's one year difference in age um, and uh, the difference in expected value of systolic blood pressure is about one unit, uh, which is 0.98, it's almost one unit. Um, so that means if you have a higher age, you're expected to have higher systolic blood pressure. And similarly, we got the uh, uh, standard error estimate and the t-value, because this is a, a t-test. Uh, and, and then we got the p-value based on the t-scores. Um, and the first one, we got the significant effects, because we got p-value less than 0.001, it's highly significant. And we can see um, the 95% uh, confidence intervals from about 0.8 to 1.16, so which uh, not include the zero uh, within the confidence interval, so which really means it's highly different from zero. Um, and this is corresponding to the p-value less than 0.05. Um, and uh, the second model, um, the parameter estimate we got is 0.956. So this is interpreted as the expected difference in the systolic blood pressure for a one year increase in age when the gender is sex as a constant or we hold the gender constant. So just really say like say, um, you compare a two hypothetical population uh, with one year difference in age for male and also you compare them for female. And what you got is about 0.96 unit difference in systolic blood pressure for one year increase in age. Um, remember this is adjusted and this is an adjusted or crude estimate. 
and the this and adjusted uh, uh, parameter beta also get the significant uh, result. Okay, so p-value less than 0 0.001 and t-score is 13, which is really high. But remember here, our goal is not to see if age is a significant effect on SPB. So here our goal is to look at if gender is a confounder for the relationship between age and um, systolic blood pressure. Um, and therefore, what you really want to compare is if there's a significant difference between the first and adjusted estimate and the second uh, adjusted estimate. Uh, so when we're adjusting for uh, gender. Um, so here's the conclusion. The estimate for the age in 95% confidence limit in model one does not change much uh, when adding sex into the model. So it's really comparing this 0.98 with 0.96. Um, and we can see if you can do a, a simple calculation, it's very easy. You can see this difference is less than 10% of the change. So it's basically you use 0.95 minus 0.98 divided by 0.98. That's the percent change. Uh, you can see this is less than 3% change, and this definitely less than 10%. And therefore, per the 10% rule, sex does not confound the effect of age on systolic blood pressure.